What's up guys, my name's Luke. I'm a Rocket League coach, coached over 200 players ranging everywhere from bronze to SSL. And I make these videos because a lot of people suck at Rocket League and I don't want you watching to be one of them. So today we're gonna be breaking down a 2v2 replay from none other than the ex-pro Lethemir playing against Atomic and AJ, two of the arguably most mechanically skilled players in the scene right now to see how Lethemir outplays some of the best, despite having nowhere near the mechanics and being an ex-pro himself. As always, if you're new here and you're interested in getting coached by me, I run a six week live coaching program called the Grand Champ Roadmap with actually over 150 members inside at this point. And if you're interested in getting involved, the only way I let people in is if you DM me and we have a conversation. So if you're inspired after this video and you're interested in coaching, DM me the keyword Leth on Discord and we can talk about coaching. Without any more wait, let's check out the replay. Alright, so we're in the match here. Let's jump into it. We got Leth and Lunar versus Atomic and AJ. This is going to be a stacked lobby. It'll be exciting to see how Lethemir outplays Atomic and AJ, two absolutely mechanically nuts players on the blue team. We're on the road to 200k and I'm trying to do this full time one day, um, so I'd really appreciate it if you dropped a sub and you haven't already. But yeah, let's hop into the analysis. And I mean, first thing, like you just see from the start, um, something I want to touch on is cheating. A lot of people ask, should you cheat? at the lower ranks, and my answer in 2v2, you absolutely should cheat. Um, even in situations like this, where the ball, you know, it, it doesn't always go right, it is too valuable to be the first one to this ball after the 50-50, um, and so you should absolutely always cheat up. Lethemir's gonna cheat up there very well, conserves boost, um, and keeps his distance. Excellent cheat. Now Lethemir's gonna rotate around, and just like, once again, just the nuance. A lot of people don't appreciate this, and I want you to pay attention to the little things that Lethemir does, because this is the stuff that I guarantee you you are doing. So look at how awkward this is and how hard this is for Lethemir. He's had zero boost. AJ and Atomic just killed his teammate, right? And this is about worst case scenario. Notice how when this ball goes back into his zone, though, he's flipping, he's getting back as fast as he can, and then pay attention to this zigzag boost pathing. Watch how he moves. Just naturally, even though Atomic steals his boost, he's zigzagging right over the boost um, to follow it exactly how he should be. And it's little things like that that are just automatic for some of the best. Then he's going to push up here, and that's just a, a very smart leave. You're going to see here, Lethemir's moving up. He's at zero boost. He sees that Lunar is on the right here. Lunar just got demoed, right? Remember, five seconds ago, Lunar just got demoed. So Lethemir is thinking, huh, who should go for this ball? The person with zero boost or the person with the 100? Even though he has the better angle, he's going to concede the ball to his teammate. Notice how with the car language, he's going to turn to the left to signal to Lunar, hey, it's your turn to push up. And even without comms, this turning away forces Atomic to go back, and now Lunar can take a free ball, free possession with 100 boost. Those are the little things, right, that, that you're probably not noticing at the lower ranks and that, that you probably aren't doing in your game. You're just going for that ball, right, because it's in front of you, but Lethemir has very, very high game sense. He's going to rotate back, pick up boost. This is, once again, very smart. Look at the space here. Lethemir sees Atomic has the ball back on his half. He has zero boost. Lunar is rotating out. AJ is coming around, probably going to push for a demo here on the, in the 2v1. And so what does Lethemir do? He knows, hey, only way I am saving this goal is if I have 100 boost. He's going to rotate all the way around, going to create some awkwardness with a uh, blue team here, and he's going to make a perfect challenge at the right time. Dumps it off to Lunar, and yep, that's going to be a goal. Let's check out again. He's once again going to cheat up. Um, he's going to let Atomic get the ball. Um, and once he sees that Atomic has possession here, yeah, I would be very scared as Lethemir is. He's going to pull back instantly because, I mean, you can imagine when a player has this ball with open space, Atomic is taking to the air. And he's going to take this downfield. So Lethemir's like, all right, got to get back. Got to get boost to find the goal line. And it looks like Atomic doesn't quite get the hit he wants. He's going to hit it across. Uh, you see AJ on the right side here. Let's see how Lethemir defends this attack from the blue team. As uh, textbook. That was perfect. That's exactly what you should do. You know, a lot of you might be watching right now like, wait, what did Lethemir do so well there? No, this is exactly what he should do. Notice how in this situation, Atomic and AJ um, have the ball upfield here. And there is a massive, what you would call, and what I uh, tell the players I coach, this is called a threat gap. What is a threat gap? A threat gap is any area of space on the field that gives the opponent time to set up a play. And so notice how when Lethemir identifies this threat gap here, the first instinct is flip forward, shrink the threat gap, right? Close the gap, play the open space. 
And then when he sees AJ go up and pre-flip this ball, notice how he is already up in the air. Why? Because if we switch to a fly cam here, you see Lunar behind, Lethemir knows Lunar's behind, of course, by going up here and challenging the high ball and covering all the options in this part of the defense, what is going to happen? It forces AJ to hit the ball under, and guess who gets a free clear? Lunar, right? And so you might watch that and say, wow, Lethemir looked awkward there. Lethemir looked panicked. No, he actually played exactly what he should. And by shadowing, by closing the gap, by getting up in front, and then attacking and going up early, that creates this offensive opportunity for Lunar that results in a one-on-one -on -one and a near instant turnover and goal for the orange team. Once again, Lethemir is playing nearly perfectly there. Lethemir is going to hit it up, follow the ball. And that was actually just just the perfect play as well. <laughs> why is why is Lethemir so good? Because all the little things he's doing right. Why am I obsessing over this little play here? I'll explain. Take a look at this. In this situation, what are the details? What information do we have? All right, this is a little awkward. A lot of you are probably feeling a little bit overwhelmed. How do you figure out what to do in this situation? Let's break it down step by step. First, we see on the blue team, we see Atomic is first man. He's challenging a ball that's going to be bouncing, so Lethemir's going to have to give some space because Atomic can do a lot with this ball. He can boom it, he can hit it infield, he can bang it off the wall, so Lethemir's going to concede a little bit of space. AJ is wrapping around to the right side, and you see Lunar in front of Lethemir looks like posturing to defend this ball. So what's Lethemir going to do? First step is going to be turn back. So Lethemir turns back, starts shadowing, gets on the wall. Why? Because now the entire field is in front. So if there's no cutting behind him, if Lethemir is facing, let's say this arrow is Lethemir, if Lethemir is facing this direction right here, and Atomic banks the ball off the wall, then the blue team has the opportunity to put it behind him, and AJ can swoop around and score. So what's he going to do? He's going to get to the wall and position this way. That's step one. Perfect execution. Then he's going to turn infield, and you see Lunar's rotating out, Atomic has now lost possession, and AJ is creeping up here. Okay? So what decision does Lethemir make? A lot of you, what you would do here, you would bang this ball into the corner. You would bang the ball into the corner and beat Atomic. But no, what does Lethemir do? He makes a soft touch up in the air that allows him to double jump and stay close to the ball. And then by staying close to the ball, he flies up and he 50-50s AJ. And look, he just beat AJ too. Like you see this small game in 2v2. It's all about risk management and knowing where the other team is. And Lethemir is just placing the ball perfectly around the opponents. Here we're gonna see Lethemir rotating around. You see Lunar boosting off the wall, coming back quick. So what does this mean? It means Lunar's gonna be behind Lethemir. So a lot of people would be shocked by Lethemir challenging here. It's not really shocking because he knows Lunar's gonna be behind. There's a very high risk reward here. I mean, there's a very high reward to risk, rather. And so this challenge, flying over Atomic, makes a lot of sense. Gonna get on top, challenge high, dunk the ball straight over AJ and continue the offense. Lethemir actually looks for a bump as AJ is climbing the wall, almost gets it, um, but that's exactly what he should do. Jumps, wave dashes down, gets a rotational demo out on Atomic and gains possession once again. Like you see this gameplay. It's like, it's just, he's not flip resetting. He's not air dribbling, but he's making the right decisions. And how does he do it? Where does it all start? What can you implement in your gameplay? You look at the opponents and you look at their spacing. Stop staring at the ball, right? So many people are infatuated with where the ball is and not where the opponent is. And when you can constantly be looking at the opponents, knowing what the, to do with the ball becomes easier. And that's what Lethemir is doing so, so well here. Let's see what he does when he regains possession. Here he's going to take the ball. He's going to hit it up. Um, and he sees Atomic coming here off the demo. And that's just, yeah, that's just a brilliant challenge. Like, let's watch this from Atomic's perspective. And you can see why this is so effective. Lethemir gets the ball here. Atomic just got demoed. Right? And the ball is on his side of the field. He sees, okay, boom, AJ's moving up the field a little bit, but he sees Lethemir take the ball here. He just respawns, right? And he's probably a little disoriented, right? He's a little scared. So the ball comes in here, Lethemir hits it off the wall, and Atomic respawns. He's thinking, oh, I got a challenge, I got a challenge, I got a challenge. So what does Lethemir know? Well, if Atomic is panicking, Lethemir is just going to chase this down and force it early. And now Atomic just respawned. And what would you do if you were Atomic there? You would do the exact same thing, but because Lethemir gets that demo and he knows Atomic is awkward, now he's got, now he's on the offense and he nearly gets a free goal because of it. We'll back it up though. Let's rewatch here and resume from the play. So here Lethemir is positioning back, um, kind of just being patient, 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 letting Lunar go for the solar solo play. And this is absolutely what you should be doing. A lot of people would creep up farther here, but no, you absolutely don't want to. Notice how Lethemir is positioning his car sideways a little bit. And why is his car sideways? This ball in Lunar's possession could go one of three ways. So let's just draw up an option coverage diagram here of what's going on. 
the ball likely in this situation is going to go any one of these three ways. So as Lethemir, what options are he covering? He's covering the option off the backboard, the option to the left, and the option back um, with his car positioning. He's playing up close to be able to get a rebound, but his car is also sideways in case AJ booms this, he's going to have enough time to chase it down right? And that's just perfect positioning. And that allows him to play every option. That's called option coverage. Very simply, at any given time, you want to be paying attention to where the cars are facing. And that's how you position your car accordingly. You can kind of use that option coverage diagram to see where the threats are. And then you just cover the most pressing threats. Lethemir does that very, very well there. Lethemir is going to make a very nice clear off the backboard using the backboard, even with low boost. That's where mechanics come in. Um, and then he's going to fly up to this ball. This hit is a little strange. I wonder what Lefemir was going for here. He's, he's trying to hit the ball up um, and play it up. Um, ah, okay. I, I, I think I understand why Lefemir goes for this ball, and, and I agree with his decision. So here you see Lunar up, uh, rotating back, about to come pick up this back boost, and Lefemir knows this, rota uh, this rotation is going to be delayed. So something I was actually talking about, I was on a call with Alishin. Um, I'm not sure where he currently plays for, but he's played for Ghost, um, tried out for Rogue, one of the best players, 7.5k hours. He's absolutely one of my favorite pro players I've talked to to date. Um, and what he recommends doing, and I think this this is what Lethemir goes for, is in these situations where you have, uh, you know, somebody rotating back and the ball's airborne, the scariest thing that can happen here is if Lethemir lets this ball go and lets Atomic get space and challenge the ball in his corner. So what Lethemir is going to do is he's going to go up here, gonna hit the ball up, use a little bit of boost to land quicker, and then he uses the last bit to follow up the ball. And you see how much time that delays? And now Lunar is back, right, and safe, and they're still on offense. That's like, like that play, even though it doesn't result in a goal, absolutely it manages risk really, really well. He just, he's not giving the blue team any options. So that's just brilliant. That's just brilliant. This is another thing I want to point out here. Like, like there are so many learning moments from watching Lethemir here, but like, let's, let's keep adding on to it. So like, check this out. How much boost do you think Lethemir has when he goes for this ball? Look how high this ball is in the air. Look at how high this ball is. This is like nearly at the ceiling, right? And Lethemir is about to go from here all the way up to here, right? He's about to go all the way down here. I'll even be conservative and say the ball's going to fall a bit. He's, he's going to go to there. Look how much height he covers. Look at where he makes contact with the ball. How much boost do you think he used there? A lot of people would say, oh, he must have used 40 boost. He, he must have used 50 boost. Let's rewind. Look at his boost meter. Look at his boost meter in this play. This is nuts. 23 boost in the tank. Look how high this ball comes up. And he still makes contact, <laughs> right? And hits it forward and delays time for Lunar to get back, right? What What is the takeaway here? Like, what is so good about this? Watch Lethemir's fast aerial. When he fast aerials, he uses a little bit of boost to get off the ground, but he he's not using that second jump until his first jump has completely expired and he's completely gained the most height he can. I talk about this in my 100 um, game, game changing tips and tricks video, but he's getting the full height from his first jump, then using the second jump, and then not starting boosting till he's already a bit off the ground. Why is it important that he's not starting boosting till he's a little bit off the ground in this situation? Because if he started boosting right from the start, some of his boost would contribute to him going forward and not to him going up. But when you only have 23 boost, you need to milk every uh, store, right? Every, every store boost you have in the tank. And so that's exactly what he does. He tilts his car back. He doesn't start boosting until his car is already vertical a bit. And that's what allows him to get so much height with that fast aerial that a lot of lower rank players probably wouldn't. Let's watch this though. Lethemir's gonna play back. He's just gonna let AJ hit. And look at that patience. That's just really, really good patience. He's gonna go low. The main thing here, like that that is really smart about this play, is like AJ passes the ball off, Lunar challenges. And so like AJ thinks Lethemir is going here, and AJ has no choice but to hit this ball. Because if AJ doesn't hit this ball and Lethemir like hits it off the wall, he's gonna have a free one-on-one -on -one and AJ's gonna have a really tough time. So, so Lethemir's like, yeah, great, hit the ball off the wall and let me get free possession, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's that patience. And then he does a great job of controlling the ball. As soon as he's done, he lands on his wheels. And what does he do? Rotates out. He unfortunately doesn't get anything out of that goal, but he was low boost. And honestly, just maintaining possession and getting back is probably the best play there. So I really, really like that. Once again, great patience. Like th this video probably just sounds like me drooling over Lethemir's play, but but like if you're watching this right now and you're sitting like Plat Diamond Champ, and you're you're trying to figure out how you take your gameplay from the level you're at to that next level, like I would highly encourage watching players like Lethemir because he's not like 
like you can actually watch this gameplay and take something away from it um whereas when you watch a player that's super mechanically skilled it can be really easy to get kind of lost in the noise with what they're doing but like for example like something i want to explain here is like a lot of you would see you know a player take to the air and you'd have no clue what to look at for how to know when to challenge this ball but like here's here's what lethemir's thinking about and like here's what i'm thinking about like as a gc2 gc3 player <laughs> aj's going up the wall Lunar's challenging here, so AJ's clearly had to use boost to cover some ground here. Where is he taking off from the wall? He's taking off from all the way back here. Where's the goal in this situation? Right, it's all the way back on the right side there. So think about how much ground AJ has to cover with this air dribble, right? And Lethemir has 100 boost, so what's Lethemir gonna do? Just patience. You see this? Just patience, patience, patience. A lot of, like, the way you go wrong here is this ball goes up and, like, you see AJ down here and you try to challenge it right here. But it's like, no, you have all this space on defense. Why not use it, right? And so he's just going to let AJ burn himself out of steam, right? He's a mechanical player. He's respecting his play. And he's like, okay, great. Thanks for the ball. I'm just going to take it and hit it by your entire team again. Like, that's what Lethemir does so well. It's like that awareness, knowing when, you know, to accelerate and knowing, knowing when to hold up. And he just keeps really, really good tabs on the opponents. And that's how you outplay players that, you know, have these, these really, really expansive mechanical toolkits. If I'm just going to keep going on about all the left things Lethemir does right, like what is like what is good about this play? Like even though he doesn't make anything of this here, like this is, it's a really awkward spot. Um, and he doesn't actually end up, like in this situation, he's getting chased by down by Atomic. Doesn't really make sense to hit the ball to the center here because Atomic will just pick it up. So he's kind of just staying on it, staying close. What does he do really well though? Like he sees AJ going for the ball and he just continues driving. He doesn't overcommit. And I know that might not seem flashy, right? But the thing that this allows him to do is like he doesn't overcommit. And then, so he turns back and he's at half right now and AJ hits this ball and Lethemir's already back to start the attack even, or to stop the attack rather, even before it develops. And so those little things like not overcommitting, playing the right, you know, playing the small game, it's just, it's just every part of Lethemir's gameplay is, is contributing to his team winning. Um, and that's why, even though I'm going to be honest, I don't think Lunar's having the best game here. Um, Orange team is still winning, right? Atomic and AJ could easily, you know, be up 3-1, 4-1 if Lethemir wasn't doing all these little things right and just carrying on and off the ball and with every little decision he makes. Which is why, I, I, I don't know, when I watch Lethemir, I'm just always so impressed. This clear is like, once again, like... <laughs> I feel like I'm just I'm just obsessing over the little things, but like I hope you guys understand like how good Lethemir is. Like any higher, this ball is hitting the waterfall here. And for those of you who don't know, like if this part of the map up above here, it's called the waterfall. Okay, anything up here, it's called the waterfall. And what happens when you hit the ball into the waterfall? You probably know this intuitively. If the ball connects up here, where's it going? Right down there in front of your net. So this is a really good. Uh, part of the map that you can use when you're on offense if you're like centering the ball or setting up attacks but like look where lethemir clears it watch this where does it hit right below the waterfall so he clears the ball right over his head into the waterfall and then it comes out for like the furthest clear possible like he literally could not have made you know maybe he could have cleared it a little more so that way the ball you know went over here rather than over here like maybe could have got it a little more um left from this from this direction but man it doesn't get much better than that and then he's gonna jump down and like at that point you know there's not much you can do um and when you're playing against atomic and aj you give them the little bit of <laughs> the tiniest bit of space and it's like nuts like look at this atomic dishes it right to aj and that's top right every time this is like this is why i really really appreciate appreciate Lethemir's gameplay because it's like with the current meta with everybody being so mechanical you know sometimes players watch and it can be a little disheartening to know like how good people are mechanically and how much ground you have to cover if you want to get to this level but then you watch a player like Lethemir and it's like no Lethemir is just smarter like he's just making better decisions and this guy's hanging with two top pros to this day just because his head is always at the right spot it, like just so much respect for this level the style of play He's going to hit it center now, stay close to the ball, hit it up. Yep, that's exactly what you should do in that situation. Flip back, try to make the save on the goal line. And that's going to be an open net for Lunar. Yeah, I think so. Oh, Lunar's not going to score that, actually. That probably should have been an open net for Lunar. Maybe maybe Lunar was low boost, so I'm not sure. Um, but Lethemir's play was, was perfect there. Um, when you're low boost, like, this is something that you should take away. Like, if you're ever low boost and you need to stall, like, these hits, especially in ones, are really, really good. 
like when the ball comes up here like your low boost a lot of people would like try to just drive into this and like hit it into the side but that wouldn't work like they'd pick up the ball and probably come back around Lathomir is just going to get under it and he's just going to kind of catapult it up and that's going to buy some time and make it tricky for atomic to put a tough shot on that right atomic can't shoot that ball that hard then he's gonna rotate back and notice how like Lethemir's low boost. So he's gonna wait for the last possible second to go up and block this angle. Um, and even though he doesn't get it perfectly, this ball ends up landing like what? Like right here? Yeah, a little high. Like Lethemir, the idea there is, is perfectly right. Lethemir. All of it comes together. He's gonna split up a pass there, reads that very well, and that's just another goal. Like, <laughs> like, like he's just, like he's just outplaying Atomic and AJ. He's just smarter, right? He's not better. He's just smarter, um, and and that's what you can really appreciate from watching Let the Mirror. So hey, if this video is inspirational, if you if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like. Um, I hope you did enjoy this. I love watching Let the Mirror. Let me know who you want to see next in the series because this like this is super fun to me to for me to make, and I hope you got value. If you're interested in getting coached by me directly, DM me the keyword Leth over on Discord, and we can talk about how you can get involved with my private coaching. But other than that, that's all I've got. So as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace, guys.